from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. I am thrilled today to introduce a real innovator in children's books, Laura Overdeck, someone who took on the heroic task of making math fun, even when your kids and you are really tired. Who 2013 book, Bedtime Fun, Bedtime Math, A Fun Excuse to Stay Up Late, really is a fun excuse to stay up late. I mean, who wouldn't want just 15 more minutes to figure out problems like those in a chapter called Exploding Food? In the book, kids are asked to solve problems in everyday settings, ketchup bottle squirts, drop Cheerios, Legos, and the book has been a huge hit. Um, her new book, which I also have, uh, Bedtime Math, this time it's personal, offers uh, something, as its title suggests, a little more personal. For example, it asks, if you're turning five years old and you can still remember your third birthday party, for how long have you remembered it? This was hard for me, so I had to turn. They, luckily, they have the answers on the bottom so the parents can look it up. Um, um, Overdeck, who has a degree in astrophysics and an MBA is a, and is also a mother of three, came up with the book idea at her children's bedside, and she has gone from counting stuffed animals with her two-year-old and launched not only two wonderful books, but also a nonprofit organization that works with community partners that support strong science, technology, engineering, and math education. She also has a popular website and an app where kids of all ages can come back for more daily math challenges. As Overdeck told Time Magazine, we want kids to feel about math the way they feel about dessert after dinner. So here to tell us more about her work is Laura Overdeck. Thanks so much, Nora. And it's great to see you all. And uh, Nora already gave a great explanation of what we do at Bedtime Math which is um, to try to make math something that kids want to do on purpose during playtime. The way you look forward to it like a, a play date or dessert. And um, I'm just waiting for the first slide to come up. Is it over there? Oh, OK, you can see it, but I can't. That's going to be interesting. <laughs> now I'm doing memory. OK, so um, I'm going to, can I step down there? Just want to make sure I don't trip over anything. Okay, that's better. Okay. Okay. So the main thing about math that I think is maybe missing in our schools and in our culture and causing us not to think of it as a fun or relevant thing is that math actually is just in our everyday lives. And you kind of need to be doing math all the time without realizing it. And when you dig into the numbers under things, you find out that our world is even more interesting than you realized. So I have this sign up here. You've all driven on a highway and seen a sign like this. I was astonished to find out that those interstate shield signs, the blue and red thing that tells you what highway you're on, those are three feet tall. So if you're a kid here in the audience, it's like as tall as you are almost. And those letters are like a foot and a half tall. We don't realize that because the signs are really high up and we're flying by them. And because of perspective, it, these, it looks like these teeny little cute numbers and letters. They're huge. Even more astonishing, when you're on a road like this with a dotted line, does anybody know how long those dashes are? Do you have any guesses? Three feet, two feet. I hear a five feet. I heard a 40 feet. Yes? Three and a half feet. So you guys are right on track. Most Americans guess that they're two to three feet. They are 10 feet long. So if you're a kid, if you lie down end to end with your, your mom or dad, um, you're not even as long as that. <laughs> and the gaps between them are 30 feet. And I was just blown away by this when I learned this, because we drive down the road all the time, right? Again, it's perspective. You're going fast. You're looking down the road. A lot of that road is very far away from you. And it's, it, you know, it's far. We can do this on a bigger scale, too. Here's a map of the United States, which is about 3,000 miles wide. It's interesting that if you <coughs> smushed our moon up against it, that's what it would look like. The distance from San Diego to Jacksonville is almost exactly the width of our moon, 2,100 miles. And 
even weirder. See Alaska down there? You know how they always shove Alaska in there like a stepchild down there, you know, next to Hawaii as if they have anything to do with one another? If you put Alaska on top of our country, that's what it looks like. Alaska's actually about 3,000 miles wide. Again, scale is an extremely important part of our lives. You can do this with other things like time. Like how many millions of minutes old are you? Um, it turns out that a million minutes is, oh, I see, this is not, there we go. A million minutes is about two years. So if you take your age in years and divide by two, that's how many millions of minutes you have lived. It's just a good fact to know. I'm not gonna reveal what my number is, but you can think <laughs> about yours. So that's uh, kind of a fun way to think of your life. And then it's also interesting to think about how you spend those millions of minutes. So for every minute of the day that you do something, if you do that every day for a certain number of minutes, if you multiply by six, that tells you how many hours per year you do it. So if you do video games for like 40 minutes a day, oh, that's not a big deal. Well, that's, you know, 240 hours a year. That's 10 days. That's a week and a half of your life each year <laughs> doing video games. And it's, there's nothing wrong with that, but like it's good to know, you know, how things add up. So this, and, and the reason is because if you multiply by 365 to get the total, you then divide by 60 to turn it into hours, and that's about one-sixth what you're doing there. So when we go about our lives, unfortunately in our educational system, math has gotten a bad brand. It's seen as a dry, tedious thing you do in school. Um, it's often not very playful. And it often is on paper. It's not tangible. It's not like those lines on the road or those signs over the highway or the moon, you know, things you can touch. Not that we can touch the moon unless you're an astronaut, but, you know, these are tangible things. We have trouble bringing that into the classroom. And then we break that link of understanding why math is so relevant just to everything you're doing on a normal day in a very non-academic, normal, regular way. You know, numbers are parts of our lives. So, I have been looking into why this is. You know, why are people, you know, a lot of people when they see a number, this is how they feel, right? <laughs> you know, you're welcome to try to solve that. It comes out to a pretty nice, neat number. Um, but, you know, it turns out math anxiety is a very real physiological thing. MRIs have shown that when, pe that when people who are afraid of math have to take a quick quiz, the parts of the brain that light up are the same ones as for physical pain. Like, it hurts to do math if you don't like it. And this can become a self-fulfilling prophecy because if you have math anxiety, it blocks your working memory. It will make you do worse on the test. And then you get into this terrible cycle. And with kids in schools, it's shown that around uh, fifth or sixth grade, it really starts to rise among a chunk of kids and twice as many girls as boys. Um, and then that really, unfortunately, gives you a shaky foundation going forward. If we trace why this happens in our society, though, why do we ever feel nervous about math to begin with? I think this is kind of stunning. This is the top 100 books on Amazon, educational books for kids. Each row is a book. And what I did is I filled them in yellow if it was a book about ABCs and yellow on this side if it was about numbers. I wanted to see the balance of fun alphabet books versus fun number books. Now, aside from the fact that there are three times as many alphabet books as number books, so from the get-go with little kids, we're not giving our kids as many cute math books as uh, reading books at that age. But this is what I found shocking. If you look at what those 27 books are, it's fun things like Dr. Seuss's ABCs, you know, A is for ketchup, Z is for moose, really fun books. These were the math books. <laughs> All workbooks. And like, that's just not gonna make it much fun. You know, and, and that was really what motivated me then to write Bedtime Math. Um, for about six years, my husband and I, with our little kids, we have three of them, we started when the first one was only two. We just started giving a funny math problem at night along with her book because we all know to read to kids at night. Again, we have a great culture around reading. A lot of parents know to read to kids. We've got lots of books out there. And 
it's just a regular part of the routine. And why don't we do that with math? And then we wonder why kids head into school and just hit a wall sometimes. And we haven't built that nice, cozy, nurturing foundation of math. So, but my husband and I were math people. He actually is a valid mathematician <laughs> by training. Uh, you know, we'd give her math problems at night about her stuffed animals, counting the noses and paws on them. Then we had two boys that switched to ninjas. And, you know, we'd talk about, you know, funny, whatever we talked about at dinner, we'd make up math problems. And friends started saying, you know, are you going to share these? And that was really how it started. I, I started a blog sending these out to parents to give people something fun to do involving math at night. And, you know, no paper or pencil, all mental, tying it in with things kids really like um, and different levels for different ages. On the thing about topics that kids really like, I've been astonished to see how much freedom you have when you don't have to obey to the textbook rules. Like, I write math problems about candy, about ninjas who have weapons and are breaking into houses. You know, We can do all kinds of stuff that I think that's another problem we have going on in our schools is that we don't have a whole lot of lightheartedness because everything's got to be correct. I can write whatever I want, so that's been, <laughs> that's been a great freedom. And so it started off as, oh, oh blog, which is still going today. I've written about a thousand math problems, one a night. And this one was about a guy who made igloos by um, filling up milk cartons with water and food dye and freezing it to make colored blocks. And he built an igloo and put a light inside. Just amazing. And you know, that's like a really cool thing. We did a math problem about it. That's the kind of thing we do on the website. And then this eventually led to the books, and Nora showed you a couple of them. And that's book three, the teal one. The truth comes out. That's coming out in March. And it's all really wacky facts, kind of like the ones I was showing earlier. So you know, that's what we're trying to do. This is a math problem from book two. If you wanted to see a little sample, it's about your underwear. And how many pairs of underwear do you need to get through life based on how often you do your laundry? You know, there's math in that. That's a daily thing. If I've got six pairs, I've got to do laundry five times in a month to make it through, right? So that's what we're really trying to do with, with the books. We then realized, though, that, again, it's when things are hands-on that you really um, can appreciate scale and size and numbers in a, in a much better way. So at Bedtime Math, we've, we now have the blog and we've got the books, but we have now launched a math club, an after-school math club that is basically a free kit that any elementary school or library can order to host eight weeks of math club. Because we looked around and realized there isn't really a very prevalent math club for elementary school kids. And that's when you want to catch them. Because again, that math anxiety thing, hitting in fourth and fifth grade and sixth grade when kids start doing fractions, that's when it all kind of falls apart, you want to grab kids before that age and, and make it fun. So we have come up, we're a nonprofit, and my royalties from the books come back in to help fund this. It's a free kit that any school can order to do things like, this is glow-in-the-dark geometry. We have kids build lattices out of glow sticks and then flick off the lights, and it's really cool. We have um, toilet paper Olympics, which is what it sounds like. You know, they, they do uh, the long jump and the shot put with toilet paper that is conveniently four inches a square. So there are three squares per foot. You know, you're learning your threes times tables. They're learning how to measure and convert units. And, while, and, and they're working on their shot put while they're at it. So that's really what our math club is about. Because again, we're just trying to show how numbers are part of everyday, ordinary objects in our lives, and that they're a lot of fun. So I thought I would wrap up by teaching just a couple of really fun math tricks so that you can like wow people and sound really smart. Because you know when you're quick with your numbers, it's just, it's just good. And you can check your math on things. So this is a fun one I recently, just this is a basic one, how to multiply a two-digit number by 11 really quickly. So let's say we have 35 times 11. This is really easy. You just take the two digits and add them together and shove them in the middle, and your answer is 385. So yeah, so like let's try one, like 52 times 11. 5 plus 2 is 7, shove it in the middle, 572. It's as easy as that. And 
I do want to note that if, you, if they add up to 10 or more, you've got to carry the one. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it does have a hitch. So if you do 64 times 11, you're going to get uh, 10. You're going to have a zero in the middle. And instead of 604, it'll be 704. But that's the only hitch. Other than that, it just basically, it always works. And that's good because if you ever need to multiply by 12, like to find out how many months are in some number of years, uh, this is a good way to get there. This is a little shortcut. Um, Here's another one, multiplying by 5. My kids like this one. Multiplying by 5, you know, if you multiply by 10, you're going to get double what you wanted. So you can multiply by 10 and cut in half, or you can cut the number in half and then add a 0. So, you know, 64 times 5, just cut it in half, add a 0. There's your answer. Now, the reason this is good is because it works in reverse. And, you know, when you're in a restaurant and you need to figure out the tip, I've been ranting about the tip for a long time because when I go to restaurants, I can't believe how many times people are like, you watch other tables and people are like, oh, could you figure out the tip? You know, it's funny. We all, you know, college educated people, when they pick up a newspaper, know that they can read the paper because it's ninth grade reading level, right? Shouldn't we feel the same way about ninth grade math? This is fifth grade math. <laughs> Right? Like, we should be comfortable <laughs> with this level of math. And, um, you know, our country is not. Restaurants now calculate the tip for you. And by the way, I was at The Modern in New York, really nice restaurant. My college roommate is now a restaurant reviewer for The New York Times, so we have to go like places and eat, which is great. Um, and we went to this fancy schmancy restaurant. And, you know, when they brought the, the, the bill, you know, we turned in our two credit cards to just split it. And the bill came, and um, they had cut the bill in half, but not the tip. Had we not checked the math, they were basically putting 40% tip on the bill. So whenever you get those receipts, like, check it, because there's stuff going on. And I would like to think they just didn't do the math right, and it was accidental, but we caught it. We gave 20%. We left it at that. Um, anyway, the point being, Really quick way to figure out the tip is just to divide by 5. So just do it in opposite. Dividing by 5, if you divided by 10, you'd have half of what you want. So you can just double the number, move the 0, and that's your answer. It always works. Um, and now we can get fancy. Squaring numbers that end in 5, two-digit numbers that end in 5, is really easy, as it turns out. So 65 times 65, you know, you look at that and you're just kind of paralyzed, right? Like, oh, I got to sit and, you know, do the cross and the grid and this and that. Um, all you have to do is take the 6, add 1 to it, multiply those together, and then just tack on a 25. That's the answer. So, like, 35 times 35, 3 times 4 is 12, 12, 25. That's the answer. Numbers are really beautiful and cool. You know, this is, this is the stuff we need to be doing more of. Um, I'll give you one more because this is super cool. If you have to add up a whole bunch of numbers in a row that are equally spaced, like the numbers from 1 to 100, that's actually really easy. Um, in this series, what are the two middle numbers? 50 plus, oh, you know, the thing got shifted. 50 plus 51 is 101. The 49 and 52 are also 101. 48 plus 53, 47 plus 54. Every pair adds up to 101, and you have 50 of those pairs. That's the answer. So you can just wow people. You know, what are all the multiples of 3 from 1 to 100 added up? You know, as long as you find the midpoint, figure out the pairs, you got it. So this is what we hope to do at Bedtime Math, is just to get, you know, to, to get the fun and the lightheartedness out of numbers and really share that with people, particularly kids. Kids in the audience, I hope you're looking at math. Hopefully you like math anyway, and hopefully you like it even more now. And as you just go about your life, you'll see that math can be really cool. Um, I hope that you check out the books. Also, the website, Free Math Problem Every Day. I wrote this weekend's a couple days ago, so I could just tee them all up. <laughs> and, um, and we've also got our math club. And anybody who thinks uh, their school might want to order it, um, it's a free kit. If you can find a coach, we send the kit. It's got all the instructions. And it's a really uh, playful way to get math into the regular routine and to show that it's playful. So uh, thank you very much for coming. And I'm happy to take questions.
but don't ask me any questions like multiplying four digit numbers. I'm not quite, like, a, not that kind of question. <laughs> yes? So would this, be, uh, would this work for teenagers? The question is, would this work for teenagers? Um, the target audience originally for this is like three to eight, three to nine, but I, got, I get that question a lot. So starting a year ago, our daily math problem on Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays has an additional level called the sky's the limit, and those are hard. There are permutations and combinatorials. There are um, logic problems, you know, different kinds of, of problems. So we are moving in that direction, and we would love someday to, to have a middle school level of the club. This club that we're rolling out, um, we have our hands full just doing this. We had hoped to get 300 clubs teed up by this fall. Our stretch goal was 500. We already have 1,500. It's going bananas, and we don't thank you. And we're really... Um, we're so excited, except we've basically wiped out the glow stick supply in this country. <laughs> like, we literally had to go find two backup glow stick suppliers because it's just been bananas. Um, so we know that there's a hunger for fun math, and so we would love to eventually bring it to, to older kids. But there, but there is math on the website that teenagers can do. Oh, sorry. I thought it was a question. <laughs> Um, oh, you have a question, yes. What's your favorite math problem? Mine is E equals MC squared. <laughs> Yours is E equals MC squared. You know, I think my favorite is that X plus one times X minus one is X squared minus one. And the reason I like this is because it's a fast way to multiply. So like 15 squared is 225. 14 times 16 is 224, and it always works. Cool. I just like cool things like that. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I really like your books. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, we've got more coming. I just signed on for books four and five, so we're going to have we're gonna have a bunch coming. <laughs> Any questions? Oh. I can't walk very far. Maybe. No question. Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. No, she doesn't have a question. We're good. Okay. Well, if anybody wants to come up and chat, I'll be here for a little while, and then I'll be signing books. You can get one, and I'll personalize it for you. And again, thank you so much for coming and for showing the math to be fun. <laughs> this has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.